Hi folks, um, I'm a big fan of GeoGebra and one of the things that disappoints me about GeoGebra is that it doesn't have any native support for polar graphing. So to address that I created something called the GeoGebra Polar Graphing Tool. To get the tool you need to go to the URL in the comments of this video. That will bring you to this website. This is the course website for my advanced math high school class. So there's a link there called the GeoGebra Polar Graphing Tool. And if you click on that it will download a GGT file to your computer. And GGT file is just like a GGB file except it's a template file. So if you click on that GGT file it'll open GeoGebra and um, with an empty project. Except there's one little difference. If you look at the top of your display in the tool buttons there's a new tool called Graph as Polar and a tool tip that says to select a function then minimum and maximum values for the angle. So let's try this with a polar function. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the window at the input window and type in my function. Now GeoGebra wants your functions to be in terms of x so a polar function would normally be something in the form of r as a function of theta. Now since GeoGebra doesn't do polar graphing or polar functions like that you still have to enter it as if it were Cartesian. So for example let's try 3 sine of um, 6x plus 1 minus 1 and I get a nice sine curve on my screen just like you'd expect. Um, let me get rid of my axes for I don't really need those. Now to use the polar graphing tool I click the tool and then go down and click on the curve that I just graphed. Now I'm going to enter two numbers. The first number is the beginning angle of the polar plot and normally that's going to be zero radians. So just type zero and enter. The second number is the final angle. So it's going to evaluate our function from whatever the first number is to whatever the last number is using those as the um, limits of x, the starting and final value for x. So uh, typically you start with 2 pi here. Um, you can experiment with that and see what happens. And there we get our polar plot. Now, right now, this is a mess because I've got my conventional sine wave display overlaid with a polar graph. Ugly. But I go over here to the algebra view and click on the little blue ball to the left of the function. And that removes the Cartesian display, leaving only the parametric curve or the polar plot. I also have created automatically a little text label that shows me what the function is and the domain of the independent variable. Now, that's another little trick I can play with this. Let me zoom it in a bit and pan it over. Right now I've got this function defined using some constants. It's an amplitude of 3 and the b value of 6 and h is negative 1 and k is negative 1. So let me play around with it and add some variables. I'm going to go back down to the input window at the bottom. Type a equals 3 b equals 6, h equals minus 1, and k equals minus 1. Now I'm going to go back up to my function, double click on it to edit it, and I'm going to change the numbers to letters. Instead of 3, I'm going to type a. Instead of 6, I'm going to have b. And instead of plus 1, I'm going to say minus h and on the outside of the parentheses instead of minus 1 I'm going to say plus k and I, if I did everything right and I hit enter this graph isn't going to change and it did because it interpreted the a in front of the sign as arc sine so let me retype that with an uppercase a and there we go. Now, these variables a, b, h, and k on the left, if I enable them by clicking on the little circle to the left, it creates a slider. Now I can drag the slider and change my polar graph. I'm really changing the amplitude of my function and getting different curves out of it. If I turn on b, now I'm changing the period of my function, getting a whole bunch of different things out of it. 
Now you can change the parameters of these slider to make the sliders to make the um, range of values you can get much greater. You can change the resolution and get lots of cool effects out of it. Let me turn on H. So in a normal sense, this would be your horizontal shift. In the polar graphing world, it rotates your curve. It doesn't change anything else. And then K, which would uh, be your vertical shift, is now shifting the curve in and out radially, which has some pretty unexpected consequences, things you're not expecting to see. Lastly, what I want to show you is how you can add a little color to this. So if I go back to my curve and select the parametric curve in the algebra view and double click on that and get object properties, now I can go in here and mess with the color. Let me pick a nice bright red for this and I can put in a fill for that. So this is a shaded fill and I can go over to style and increase the line thickness and make it dashed. And there you have it. Um, one other thing you can do with this is you can enter some other graphs. Go right back down to your input window. And um, here's another one you might not think of. As you may know, a polar function like r equals 5 or r equals 7 just gives you a circle with a radius of 5 or 7. Entering this in GeoGebra is a little bit tricky. We have to convince GeoGebra that we're entering a function. So to do that, you have to name the function. Now, the last one we did, I didn't say f of x equals. I just said 3 sine of 4x, whatever. And it created function f of x for me. So if I go down here and create a function of my own and say g of x equals 5, that will create for me, let me pan this over, a horizontal line at y equals 5. Now I can apply my graph as polar to that and enter my starting angle 0 and ending angle 2 pi and it gives me a circle. Perfect. Now I go over here, disable the horizontal line view and I now have framed my flower. And let me make my amplitude of my flower a little bit bigger. There we go. Now it's a nice fit. I'll zoom it around a little bit. Lovely. Just lovely. So this is just tons of fun to play with. If you want to explore polar functions and polar graphing, it's really easy to do it in GeoGebra using the Graph as Polar tool. So get yours today and have fun.